Roguelike Nation. So today's video we're reacting to is by What Culture Gaming. It is 10 video games that mock you for playing on easy mode. I'm one of those people. I play on easy mode all the time because I suck. I'm not afraid to admit it. Every game I play is on easy mode. So I, I get off easy because I can't play hard or difficult. It's severe difficult because I just can't. It pisses me off because I'm Latino. And when I get mad, I fucking rage, so you trust me, you don't want me to play on difficulty or hard, because Latino rage is coming out and I'm just, I don't, feelings will get hurt, feelings will get hurt. But anyways, let's full screen this, e even on easy mode I get mad, but not as mad as I will be if it's on hard mode. And let's do this shit! Difficulty settings in video games serve a very important purpose. Essentially, they grant less experienced or less skilled players access to later stages of certain games without forcing them to spend weeks honing their dismal abilities, or as Dark Souls players would term, getting good. <laughs> games like Devil May Cry and Ninja Gaiden pride themselves on their often excruciating difficulty levels. So it's only fair that less able players are given the option of making things a little easier for themselves. After all, they paid for the game, so surely they have a right yeah, to experience as I, much of I have a choice to play easy. Fuck you. some developers don't feel the same way, taking every opportunity possible to berate, taunt, or otherwise humiliate their players for taking the easy route. Which game should I avoid? Let's see. Game actively antagonize the player, but it will restrict content from them for forcing them to replay huge chunks of the story, or even deny them the satisfaction of a worthwhile ending. To put it bluntly, oh, that's a dickish and if you don't show them the respect they deserve, they'll let you know all about it. With that in mind, I'm Jules from WhatCulture.com, and here are 10 video games that mock you for playing on easy mode. Number 10, Ninja Gaiden Black. The yep. Ninja Gaiden games are notorious game. for their difficulty, like trying to scale Everest with your teeth difficult. In fact, it's one of the central appeals of the series. So much so that an easy mode has rarely been included in past entries. In Ninja Gaiden Black, however, an easy mode was begrudgingly tacked on by the developers in order to satiate their Western audiences, who were seen as less competent than their Japanese <laughs> counterparts. In Ninja Get Gaiden good. Black, a new mode was included entitled Ninja Dog, which made the game considerably easier. It also forced you to wear a very pretty purple ribbon for the entirety of the game. Which doesn't sound too bad, but I am the game's secondary character will verbally mock you throughout the entire game for your weakness, scolding you even in victory. So that's nice. Number 9, that's pretty Wolfenstein, awesome. The New Order. On the difficulty selection screen of Wolfenstein The New Order, you're presented with a few different options. So far, so normal. But the easiest of these modes are called Please Don't Hurt Can Me I and play Can Daddy? I Play Daddy. The latter of which actually depicting an image of protagonist BJ Blazkowicz sucking on a pacifier and wearing a baby's bonnet. How horrifying this image is of a fully grown man adorned in children's swaddling that it haunts my dreams. This was actually a carryover from Wolfenstein 3D, which did something very similar back in 1992. Oh, I remember that means that Wolfenstein has been awesome. making you feel like a worthless baby for over 20 years. How wonderfully emasculating. Number 8. Star Wars Shadows of the Empire Imagine you've made it all the way to the very end of Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, and just as the story is climaxing, you're left on the edge of a very indecisive cliffhanger. Well, if you're playing on easy mode, that's exactly what will happen. At the very end of the oh, game, you aren't actually told whether or not the protagonist has survived the destruction of the big bad space station. The game just cuts to credits unless you're playing on medium difficulty or above, which is kind of a dick move as at no point leading up to this would you think that it would make a difference. If you do manage to beat the game on a harder difficulty, you'll find out whether or not Dash the hero has made it out alive. Spoilers, he does. I mean, look at that chin. It could deflect a blow from a Mandalorian. Such a dick Number move, seven, though. Metal Gear Solid Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. If you die one too many times in the latest installment of Konami's Metal Gear Solid series, you'll be asked whether or not you'd like to make the game a little easier for yourself. If you agree, the game increases the amount of times you can be spotted by enemies before an alert is triggered. Oh, come on! There's a catch. Not only will your high score suffer drastically, but you'll be forced to wear the infamous chicken hat for the rest of the level, Dick. even during cutscenes. Now, you might argue that wearing a silly hat is a small price to pay for getting past a difficult section, but you'll be surprised at just how often it spoils some of the game's more dramatic cinematic moments. There's nothing quite like the sight of a man in a chicken hat killing the mood of quiet dancing nearly nude in the rain. Instead it looks of fucking ridiculous. Here. Number 6. Streets of Rage 3. As previously mentioned, there's sometimes 
comes a huge difference between the American and Japanese versions of a game, particularly in regards to difficulty. Sometimes a game is actively made easier for Western audiences by the developers, and sometimes the difficulty settings are renamed from hard to very hard and from medium to hard so that Western players don't find themselves too discouraged when playing games like Ninja Gaiden and Devil May Cry. With that said, sometimes even Western players are expected to rise to the challenge and overcome the odds. In Streets of Rage 3, for instance, the final two stages of the game are completely unplayable on easy mode, meaning that you Again, have to replay the dick. entire game on medium just to see the final ending. Worse still, after the fifth stage of the game, Robot X will actively taunt the player for their mistake, proclaiming, you play this game like a beginner. Number five, Civilization. At the end of a campaign I in Civilization, after game. hours of warring, political maneuvering, and strategy game, AKA I just more can't. Boring, you're awarded strategy with a rank games based on your performance. The shit out of me. If you're playing on easy mode, however, regardless of how well you've performed, the game will award you the rank of Warren G. Harding, a man notorious for being one of the worst, most scandalous presidents in the history of the United States. The wonderful thing about this award is its true implications aren't immediately obvious, but after a little research you'll realise the extent to which the developers were rubbing your nose in it. Number 4, Spider-Man, PS1. Which Released one? back in 2001, Spider-Man was praised at the oh, time for its gameplay PS1, and never mind. Like. With that said, it features a difficulty setting so bafflingly easy that it renders the entire game completely pointless. The kid mode makes the game virtually play. There's itself, a kid mode. To the point that entire I didn't get a kid mode. Are bypassed entirely. It skips certain puzzles and boss fights, and even takes away control of Spider-Man for brief intervals in order to complete parts of the game for you. Best of all, during an early sequence in the game, Spider-Man will be tasked with safely defusing a bomb after a bank heist goes bad. If you're playing on kid mode, he'll say, "I need to put the bomb in a safe." Place. As if there's no way you could have figured it out on your own. If you have a toddler who isn't quite capable of playing video games properly yet, then the kid mode is probably a great way to make them feel like they're actually accomplishing something. But I am not a baby. I'm a man with bills to pay and avocados in my fridge, and I only completed the game on kid mode as a joke, I swear. Not because I got stuck on the score. I wish I knew there was a kid three. mode. I would try kid mode. Six. Since the very first entry in this series, one of the central appeals of the King's Quest franchise has been the adventure itself. From the original all the way up to last year's remake, the games have showcased a variety of environments, enemies and characters, and emphasise considerably your interactions with those around you. In King's Quest VI, however, the player is given two very distinct options. A quick route and a much longer route. The correct route is the long one, at least according to the developers, as the short route bypasses several side quests and even huge chunks of the main quest as well. If you do take the short route, Cosima will lament all of the missed opportunities and experiences, suggesting that while you have indeed managed to finish the game, you've missed a lot of important stuff. Number two, Monkey Island 2, La Ah, oh, Monkey a Island! Adventure game, Monkey Island and puzzle solving are so intrinsically connected that it's hard to imagine one existing without the other. Kind this of game was so games. goddamn With that weird. Said, there's a mode in Monkey Island 2 LeChuck's Revenge called Light Mode, which actually solves many of the puzzles for you. Perhaps motivated by complaints from players who struggled with some of the more difficult puzzles from the first game, Light Mode was introduced and described in the game's manual as being for beginners and magazine reviewers. Poking fun at critics' time restraints, the mode doesn't hint or suggest at possible solutions, just blatantly solves the puzzles on your behalf. Mm -mm -mm. My dignity. Number one, Twisted Metal 2. Twisted Metal, oh my god, this game was Metal, awesome! Twisted Metal 2 improved on nearly everything about the Fuck. first game, including the franticness and unpredictability of the gameplay. As such, the game offered players the option I of playing so miss this mode, game. which is unfair given how incredibly off-putting so the series awesome. is for new players unfamiliar with the series' speed and intensity. What they don't tell you when you select this mode is that it effectively ends the game after the first boss, literally putting a stop sign in front of the player that reads, No Losers allowed. The sign isn't oh, too far into the game, so it's you. not like you have to replay much of it. But god damn, did it feel like a slap in the clutch. And that's the end of our list. Got any other games which chastise you like a child? Well then drop us a message in the comments below. And if you want to coddle me publicly, then baby you can do so here and here. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more, then like, share and subscribe. I'm Jules for WhatCulture.com and I'll see you soon. Uh, Twisted Metal though? Every time I played that game, it was with friends, because I was too goddamn poor. We grew up poor. Well, not that poor. We didn't get every game. I didn't, what am I talking about, we? I was the only kid growing up in my family. I was the only child, yeah. So basically, 
every time I would play Twisted Metal, it was whenever I go to a friend's house. But the thing is, they would play it on hard mode, and we like battle each other, and like I fucking die like every two seconds. But fuck, it was, uh -oh. it was awesome to play though. Regardless, I would lose all the time. I wouldn't give a shit because this game was awesome. And as far as we're playing on easy mode, y'all ever play that Back to the Future game for Telltale Games? There's an option there where it says like they'll give you clues. I turned that shit on for the full game. Uh, I was too lazy to figure out the clues by myself, so they told me where I'm supposed to go. I'm, I'm not afraid to admit it. I turned on the clues for the entire game. I'm not ashamed of it. I really am not. But anyways, that's it for now. Take it easy, Humanoid Nation. Humanoid freak out. Bye. Los chilenos no multiplicamos. Hay un problema, lo solucionamos. Por todo el mundo los chilenos andamos. Te pones choro, ahí no paramos. Tecnología muy avanzada.